Hi and welcome back to Rhinoceros and Grasshopper Tutorials. I am Saki Baziz and I will guide you through this tutorial. And this tutorial we will look at how to basically shape up this light bulb and we will use a reference picture that we will then use to generate our line work and then use one, one key command which is basically the revolve command to generate this complex shape. And moving forth, we will also look at how to basically set up some materials for our geometry and use light to basically get this light effect that you can see right here. And this is all going to be covered in this tutorial. So I hope you're ready and we can just start right now. Okay, so let's get started. So basically I have set up this layer structure which I will now just enable or disable basically. And I will move to my origin and therefore I'm going to put in my grid so you can see actually where I am. And I can do that with pressing the F7 that will hide or basically bring back my grid. And I want to go to my origin basically here. So currently I'm in meters, but for this exercise it doesn't really matter because this is going to be a loose more or less as estimation. And the first thing we want to do is basically we want to bring in a reference picture. So basically an image from where we can use that to draw a 2D line work and the way to do that is basically you just go into the internet and download an image I already did that so I'm just going to show you how to bring it actually inside so the command for this one is going to be picture picture frame basically you press enter and then this window opens and I have already the location of my file path is already um, given but you can just basically go to any file path if you know where you have to bring um, search for and then bring in your image. I'm going to use this one and I will also link this in this video so you can open up and use this image as well. And then I say open and then I have to define a location where I want to set this and this is going to be our zero origin point. Yeah. Oh, sorry, before I did that, so I bring it in again and before I define my origin, I have to say vertical. Yes, because I want to have a vertical not flat on my uh, construction plane. Then I define zero as the base point and then I'm just going to say the unit one. Now again, this will basically catch my um, unit to one. I press enter and then I have to define the axis and I'm going to use my X axis. So that's basically how I brought in this image. And again, like meters, inch, centimeters, whatever you're using right now, it doesn't really matter because we're just going to use basically a very uh, wake kind of setting for this because it doesn't have to be perfectly uh, real. And just to give you an um, idea about this picture frame, so if you click on this, this is actually an object, right? It's more or less like a, a surface object, as you can see, that is defined as a surface. Also, if you go into your surface tab here, if you bring in the surface generation, you can find it located at, at a picture plane. So it's basically a plane, surface plane. So I'm gonna disable that. So that means that you have properties that you can access. So if I go to my object properties, I'll bring it here so you can see it. Um, I'll bring it down and you can see that there are some basic information that you can actually get from this, right? So if I go to materials, you can see that there is going to be drop down menu, which is called picture. And if you go on that, you can see that there is going to be a transparency scale that you can basically say, okay, uh, how transparent should it be? I mean, depending on whatever you, you need this uh, plane, that is maybe helpful. So zero is going to be zero transparency and hundred, you can't see it anymore. Okay, you can also use color masks. You can also use a grayscale, but I'm just giving you an idea basically. Okay, so let me put that back here. I hope I can manage. So now it's back, okay. So this is basically our picture frame. And what I wanna do is I wanna create a layer structure that is, makes sense. So I'm just gonna say picture. And I know that this is my layer. I'm gonna select that object and put it in the picture. So I'm going to right click on the picture layer and say change object layer. That will now put this basically on that layer. And now I'm going to go there and create a new layer, which is going to call, be called line work. Yeah. And the color I'm going to give is basically red so we can see it because I'm using a black background. That's depending on your settings. I found, find it to be helpful in this situation. So. Um, I want to use basically the construction plane um, of front because that will enable me to be perfectly aligned to the XZ construction plane. So if I go to front, everything that I draw will be perfectly lying on this construction plane. Basically the red line just extruded up Z 
and that's what I want to use to draw my line work so it's all uh, in one construction plane. So I am here, I could also put on my grid with F7, here you see what I mean, so this is my construction plane now, uh, if I would use the perspective axis, this is X and this is C, okay? And this is going to be my reference image. Now I want to draw the line work, which is going to take the most time and actually to generate the geometry will be relatively straightforward, right? Because we're going to use this revolve command. So the first thing I want to do is I want to define a central axis, basically a middle axis, let's say, a symmetry axis. And for that, I'm going to use a line command and I'll make sure that I'm in my line work layer. And I'm just going to, and what I did before I do that, I locked the picture layer so I can't access this picture, this plane. Because sometimes you move objects and you select it by default and um, maybe your line work gets uh, relocated or um, you just have to, you know, do undo. So just lock it because you don't need to actually access that right now. Okay, so line. And then we're just going to draw a line which will give us some reference. Yeah, so this is basically our starting line here. And we will use our O snap and we will use our mid. So make sure that your mid is on right now. And then we will do another line, catch the mid. My smart track is on right now. Um, we can disable that for right now and I will show you then when we need it and then I'm just going to draw a line upwards so it can be you know just drawing a line upwards and then I will look how does that look actually because this is more or less we are eyeballing it yeah so we can see is that the middle it looks okay yeah it's not going to be 100% but this is not what we are aiming for anyway so let's just try to keep it the next thing we want to do is you want to draw the line work of this light bulb yeah and we're just going to assume that the top part is a perfect circle. That's just what we're going to assume. And we have the diameter of this in this image. So I'm going to go to my circle and take this circle, circle by diameter. And then I'm just going to eyeball it. I'm going to estimate, yeah, that's the one point, that's the one end point, and that's the other one. Yeah. Again, eyeballing it, it's okay. Now we take that geometry. We have our points on, we have our mid on, but we also want to make our quad on here in the O snap. Quad basically makes it um, possible that in any given circular geometry like this circle line work, you can access all the four quad points. Yeah, and that's quite useful in this case. So I'm gonna say move. And as you can see, it tells me it's mid, it's a point and it's a quad. So I have three points telling me the same information, which is okay. And now I just wanna move the circle down until I find this point here, which looks pretty much okay. And that's it, okay? So we have placed our circle, and of course it's not matching perfectly, but like I said, it's not, we are not aiming to make a perfect model out of this. I'm just we're using that as a rough guide. And now I want to draw a line from this quad point, basically, and um, combine it to the center point of this circle. So I'm just gonna press line. And then just going to search for my quad till it appears. And then I'm just going to draw a line. Now to state something, I have my author on. Now author is a helpful tool. I already explained it in the other tutorials. If you have a line and if you have auto on, it will always follow your axis, right? You can just press F7 and that should disable your author. You can also go here in the um, menu down below and press author here. But let me show you again. So I have my auto disabled right now. And if I press F8 again, I have it back on, you know? And you can see if you wanna draw straight lines following those axes, this is very helpful. Okay, and then let's continue on with our geometry here. We will draw one more circle and we will just eyeball this one again. We want basically something that we estimate that this curve is a circle again. And that's why we can just basically put this just try to basically have my gumball on here so I can just put that and that looks about right. That's more than enough. And what we want to do now is we want to trim the circles. We don't need these segments here and the segments here because we want to actually have this segment circle and this segment circle and combine it with the arc blend. So what we're going to do is we're going to just trim off what we don't need and have my author on. I will use this quad here and reference this quad here and just press OK and the same thing here 
I can use these two lines now and just say trim. So I use the trim command and I will do it again here so you can see it one more time. Here I already have the lines that are connect or crossing this line. They have to intersect. If they don't intersect, you can't do a trim. And I put on my trim command and I trim away the circles I don't need. Now I have this segment circle and this segment circle. Okay. And what I'm going to bring in now is going to be the arc blend command. Arc blend. And then just going to use my two circles and always try to locate the point where I select them where the arc blend should be. So it's going to be this point here. And I don't want to use this point up here, the segment, but I want to use this point. Uh, Rhino can be very sensitive to that. Okay, so what I have generated now is the arc blend, as you can see in the preview, but it's not perfectly matching. And again, we're going to eyeball it, but we have this axis here. We can use this handle point and you will see this curvature graph, basically just showing the curvature of your arcs. And you can still, you know, manipulate it. So you can make it a little bit more to that direction where you want to fit it to. And that's basically what I'm just going to do. Again, eyeballing it, but that looks quite fine. I press enter or enter, and then I press enter again. Otherwise, you will lose what you have just did. So if I press enter, I have now my basic outline of the bulb that I want to use. Basically, uh, only the one half, because what revolve does um, is takes a cross section and it can revolve around an axis and ge generate a geometry, which I will show you in a second. Okay, one last thing we want to do here actually is to take these three curves and join them quickly. Press join and now you should have one nice curve. Okay, so that's our light bulb. We have generated the cross section for that. We need two more cross sections and then we can actually go into the three dimensional um, realm, let's say. We also want to model up this part here and we want to model up the lower part, which is like the connector itself. Let's do the connector first because that is something a little bit more straightforward, I would say, because here again, we can eyeball it. So let's use a polyline, polyline and just have auto on and basically just go down, press your tap button, lock it and then go to a point where you can see here. So the lower point of this metal frame, let's say. And then you just press enter and then you bring your second point here. And now I still have my author on, so I can't really move along here, but I have a reference point that we have drawn the first time, the line, and then I'm going to use this one and just basically finish my rotation. I want to actually go back to this point. So I will just go here. I will go up, tab lock, find this endpoint here, and then just the endpoint. And if you have selected the same point, it should be a closed curve now. Okay. Very good. So the last thing we want to do with this curve here is basically we want to give it fillet. Now we could do it now or we could do it later on. Um, just for the sake of demonstration, I will do it now. You want to fillet basically this corner. And for that, what you would have to do is say explode. Then press your control, deselect the two curves you want to fill it. And the other curves are still selected. So you can just say join. Yeah. In that case, you just minimize the work for you because this curve is still joined and the two you want to operate on are um, exploded. And later on, you can just basically bring them back together with a join. Now we want to do the fillet. And I have a radius of 0 0.05. So that's something I have been uh, already working with to estimate this here. This is something that you can eyeball now. Basically, what we want to do is fillet these two curves that they get something like a nice curvature here, which looks okay-ish. Uh, again, it's not, it shouldn't be perfect. It's okay. If you're following the same kind of logic that I've been doing so far, this value should work for you. If you're not, then you have to try a little bit with try and error. You can also always check if I go back and undo the command, you can use a fillet and then you can say trim no. And in that way, you can always see where your, where your fillet is headed. Yeah? So 0 0.5 already shows me, okay, this line is 
Uh, it has some potential to go this way, but as soon as this curvature line extends your line boundaries, uh, it will be a failed um, fillet. So keep that in mind. Basically, what you could test is you say fillet, have your trim to know, and then say some a high number like 0.2 in this case. Take these two guys and see that your fillet is totally crossed this limitation point, this end point here. So you can go back and then, you know, re readjust your value. But in my case, where I already had this try and error period, I can say, okay, 0.05 works fine for me. And now I can just basically do that again. And now I will take this curve and this, sorry, this curve and this curve and join them back. Okay. So one more thing, we want to do the same line work for this guy here. So we will just use a line and draw a line that looks straight and do the same thing here. Basically, we're just going to assume that this is a circle to just make it a little bit more, you know, faster maybe. So I can just use my circle again, diameter, and then just use this kind of setting, which looks okay. And then I'm just going to use my line draw a line downwards using the quad. I can move it a little bit so it looks a little bit more there. And I'm going to use this to trim this off. And now I have this line and this line, which I can use to again trim off this circle here. So we already have this two parts. We have drawn this line here. And now what we can use, we could use our interpolated curve, curve through interpolated points or handle curve. I will use the interpolated curve method because again, this is going to be an eyeball estimate. And I want to actually now be a little bit more free. So I'm going to press F8 and that will turn off my author. And I can just basically draw freehand um, this curve and say enter. And if I'm not happy with something because maybe something is not right, I could just go back here and access these control points. I could delete them if I want to. If I say, okay, I just need one control point, I could access one of them and, you know, relocate them and go here and see, okay, yeah, that is a little bit, the tendency is not right. So I could, you know, just manipulate that and just eyeball it. And there you go. So we are more or less ready. If you just join them now, we are ready to go. Actually, we can go into our perspective. Now what we want to do is to use the revolve command. So this is our cross sections. And for that, we want to generate new layers. So I'm going to use a layer called glass. I'm going to use a layer called metal. And I'm going to do a, a layer called light. Okay. So the first thing we want to do is actually generate our glass. And for that, we can turn off our picture so we can actually see what we have drawn so far. I could also turn off my grid if that is distracting me right now with F7 and look at my plane and I'm going to go to glass layer and make it selected and now I'm going to show you the revolve. So what revolve does basically, it takes a cross section, takes the an axis and rotates that cross section and generating thereby a surface out of it. Now let me just show you in essence what that is. So the command we want to look is revolve enter select curve to revolve which is going to be our first curve here our light bulb basically and then press enter select a revolve axis this is going to be the axis from where i want to um, rotate at and i want to use this line here this line that goes in the z direction just define it in such a way that it's logical so you define the end point basically of your revolve surface and the uh, start point and end point basically you define that and then you access this menu of the revolve and i will go to my shaded view show that and then you have some um, options you can select we won't look at all of them we just want to use the full circle right now the start angle is zero start angle zero means that the curve section that you gave in is the zero angle you could of course say ask for start angle yourself and define it yourself if you want to and you can already see what it does. But for now, we want to say no, um, the start angle is correct. And this is basically a preview and then you say full circle. Okay. 
And there you go. So this is the magical command that actually generates this more or less complex shape, uh, rather straightforward and simple. Okay, so let's continue on. Uh, we have one more glass item actually, this guy here. And I want to do the same logic, so I'm just going to take this glass and put it away one, because I know that my unit system is um, one meter. Going to take this and do the same command, revolve. Select my start and end point of my axis, which is going to be here. And then I say full circle. And if that happens, I have my color back face on, which always tells me of a surface, where's the back face of the normals and the front face. If I have that selected and I see a color, I can just press this item and say flip. And then basically it flips the normal size. Now I have my glass layer on and these two items are on that. So I press minus one and bring it back here. And if I go to my rendered view, I should please really see that these two are now um, in a proper shape. They are still not, the material is still not glass. So that's why they are appearing solid, but we will fix that in a second. What we do want to do now is we want to concentrate on the metal frame. So I will just go to my metal um, frame here and put off the glass layer. So basically it's still there, but we just put it off for a second. And now what I want to do is do the same thing. So I want to do a revolve, but this time it's a closed curve, which uh, will generate a solid kind of um, geometry. So I will do revolve. I will use my center uh, my axis to find it and do full circle. And I have my outline here. Now, if we go back to our picture here, go to front, you can see that it has this kind of screwing um, mechanism and we want to draw that as well. So what we will do is we will define the start point of this um, screwing geometry revolvement. So I'm just gonna say point and just eyeball basically the, the start. It's gonna be here. And I'm going to define the end. Now the end, um, you can define basically somewhere where it exceeds the geometry itself. So what I mean with that, this geometry itself should be exceeded in such a way that the helix goes down um, and cuts through the whole solid. That will make sense in a second. So um, let me just put this guy away for a second by a medium. I have this point, which is floating in a wrong plane, construction plane, so I'm going to catch it and just project it. That should be fine. And I'm just going to call the command called helix. You've already seen that. If you've seen the last tutorial, you should be a little bit familiar with this command. And we want to say vertical because um, that's the direction we want to aim for. We say start of the axis, we say end of the axis, and now we have our helix here. Now, again, we want to eyeball this, so don't get super uh, precise, but we can still count the number of rotations that we see in this image, which is one, two, sorry, I can't see, one, two, three, four, yeah? And we could just say five turns, because we want to exceed that, and we define our stop, and um, then we just have to pinpoint the radius. The radius is our outline here, so I just press that. And now we see this helix, which will now serve basically as our um, geometry to take off some information of our solid, which is this guy here. So if I press minus one, it brings it back. I can put off my picture. I can put off my line work just to make it a little bit more that you can see it better. And now what I want to do is I want to create a pipe out of this line, a solid pipe. So I'm going to select my helix. I'm going to say pipe and I have to define a radius. Now, knowing that I'm in meters right now, one meters looks a little a lot, to be honest. So I'm just going to have to eyeball it again. So I'm just going to try something very low first. So 0 0.01 and that already looks quite good. So you could just try and find another um, value or a value that suits you. And you have to define the next radius, which is basically the end radius here. Or you just press enter and that will take the radius that you gave for the start as well, which is perfectly in this case because the pipe is not, you know, getting bigger and smaller. And now you just press enter and that should create this geometry for you. And what we want to do now is perform a Boolean difference. So we just say Boolean difference. We want to select our solid here 
and we want to basically select our solid here so there you go now we have this metal frame it's not super perfect uh, but again we could adjust that at any given point but for this tutorial it's super fine now we could delete this helix just delete it if you don't need it and bring back our glass and well there you go basically the geometry is there now now we what i wanted to show you again is that we could give some layers to this and some materials um, that we could give some materials to this but before we do that there's one small thing missing and i want to quickly build that with you it's basically this um, line work that goes from the glass where the, how do you say this basically where the light is emitting from and to in order to draw this geometry i want to quickly change my background color to white and now i'm going to stay a line say vertical and just basically eyeball this line here and i want to say my pawn and move this point like so that should be fine we mirror this line as well using our ortho and then we just draw a helix again helix use this axis here and turn should be fine but we want to give it a radius which makes sense so um, something around 0 0.01 in this case should be fine and I press enter and I can see that this has worked now I'm just gonna take the endpoints of my helix and put it to my line here and now it's connected basically I select these points I say join and I'm in the metal layer here and again I'm gonna use the pipe command so I'm gonna say pipe and of course I want to do something very slow, uh, slim this time so I'm gonna say 0 0.001 and that should do the trick and there you go we have our source of light modeled also and defined as metal so now we can bring everything together we have our glass we say minus one and the first thing we want to do is make sure which kind of render we have if you have multiple render machines you want to make sure that you go to rhino renderer right now because that's basically what I want to show you quickly and we can go to background go back to black and now set the materials of our layer now we could select each object individually and give it a material or we have all the geometry at one layer which is structured in a manner that makes sense and we could give that layer or the layer a material so that's what we want to do and we want to go to our material so you can see if you basically um, change the spacing here you could see that there's a sub layer called material and you want to access this white point here and here you can just go to layer to, to the type and say glass and we're just going to use whatever settings Rhino has already given for the glass right now and we want to give it a little bit more frost let's say just eyeball it right now we're not going to be super precise with this and just say okay and if we go to rendered you can already see okay the glass works so this is already showing us a glass material and we can stay in rendered we go to metal we give it a metal uh, we just go to type we go to metal select a color that should bring up a selection of metals let's say take bronze or anything you like say okay and we are almost there so we got the material set we got the geometry set the last thing missing is basically the light source and that's when I go to my light layer I turn off the glass and I look at this uh, geometry I go to shade it and so light basically is an object that you can define and um, there are several ways of access accessing that information but there's one icon here which is this create spotlight and if you in the standard and basically if you go to the drop down menu there's this one uh, icon which is called create linear light so if you press on that you can also see the command if you want to type it in so if i break it out you say linear and that should already bring linear light you say okay you now set the origin of your linear light and basically what it's going to do is going to create a tube now as you can see here if i go to my display go to white you can see this tube now and i want to define the endpoint using my ortho 
And if you have press auto, it will change the mode of the light. Um, I was not prepared for that. If that happens to you as well, don't uh, panic. Just press F8 again, and that should uh, change the mode. So you're back in linear light. You just define it basically. You just put it there, and then you just move it in the middle of this geometry here, of this helix. And now we want to actually look at this in a way that we can understand it. So if I go to uh, shade it, and I go to my color, and I go to black, now we, this is an object, right? So again, we can basically look at what this object does in FICO the properties. You have objects, you have material, and you also have light now, okay? And we want to change this light, basically. We want to say, okay, let's make it yellow, and let's make it intensity. You can give it basically what you want. So it's super bright, not that bright, or the shadow intensity, the shadow that it casts, and you can say on, and now we should go to rendered, bring back our glass and see what happens. There you go. Now the light source basically has something to reflect on and you can see now that we have our light source. So that's almost it basically. So you can go back. I want to show you something also. So you can go here to options in your panel tab and go to the layer light. Now if you don't have it on, like now the case, you go back to options, you go to lights, okay? And that brings you to this, um, the master controller of the light settings right now in your scene. Right now you can see that the sun is turned off. The sun is basically the global environmental sun that you can give, which is this panel here. Right now it's on. If I go back to my lights, I turn it off, the sun is gone. Then you have the skylight, which the rhino basically is casting. If you turn that off, the only thing uh, the only source of light that remains is basically the line, the light that you just created, the linear light. There you go. So you can just put it off. Then you don't have any light. It goes back to whatever light source it's taking. And you can put on the skylight. And what you get is basically this geometry that we just modeled using the revolve. So what have we learned? We have learned how to bring in a picture, how to reference that picture to draw the line work on a construction plane that makes sense. Then we looked at the revolve command and um, its capabilities, uh, basic capabilities. Uh, but seeing that this one command can generate very complex shapes, uh, if you understand the logic. Then we have looked at how to model this metal frame with this helix that cuts that is basically cut out of it. Then we have learned how to place materials onto layer, onto layers, and we have learned how to put in a light source. So I hope this was interesting for you and uh, let's look, uh, we will continue on with our tutorials and we will shift to Grasshopper in the next two tutorials. Uh, if you like this content, please subscribe to this channel and see you in the next tutorial. Thank you very much.